Hello and welcome to Wellness Today. I'm Chanel Jones. We've made it to July and summer is here in full swing. This year, I've been trying to live what I call self-care summer. Making time for daily quick walks, maybe my annual checkups, all so I can be the best version of myself. Summer is also the perfect time to tap into play and have a little fun. It's also the season to eat more fruits and vegetables. And why not take a staycation while trying outdoor activities like kayaking? So join me as we make our own well-being a priority and celebrate self-care summer. While many of us think of self-care as a time spent resting and relaxing, it's also important to experience all the fun that life can offer. But how can play impact our health for the better? Take a look. From kicking a soccer ball to playing a game on your phone, fun is a feeling that many crave. Play really is a basic human need. For Dr. Edward Laskowski, play has been at the center of much of his work. We all need a release from the stress that we're under. We need our minds to, to be free, to be innovative, and to be creative. Play traces its roots to humans' closest friends. It's interesting, in the animal kingdom, we see play commonly exhibited in the ape family, how the young ones are, in essence, almost taught through play different maneuvers. I think in, in humans, oftentimes we think of play as reserved only for kids, but those unique advantages of play also extend to adults. Play can come in a number of forms. There are three types of play. There's social play, where we play with each other, and this could be playing games, but it may be also exercising with friends and, and doing stuff together. There's also benefits of independent play, which means we may do something by ourselves. We may love to do a, a Sudoku or a puzzle or a Wordle today. And guided play is, is something that maybe we'll be instructed in a, in a new a new activity. Maybe we'll get cooking together and build, uh, make pasta or something like that. The impact of play, tangible and meaningful at any age. It actually changes, it produces muscle relaxation. It can increase blood flow when it's combined with movement. Those are all good physical things that it does. And psychologically, it does a, a huge benefit as far as reducing stress, reducing anxiety, modifying the effects of depression and those who have frequent play incorporated into their lifestyle. Proving that taking time for fun can be of immense value. When we step back, when we're given a chance to let our minds run free and play and figure out things in a different way than a job way, that all helps our, our whole state of being. Now that we've seen the science behind why play is important, let's break down how we can have a little fun. We're excited to welcome someone who knows how to have a good time. Annie F. Downs is an author, speaker, and podcast host who is the founder of the That Sounds Fun Network, where she celebrates the idea of fun and helps people find it themselves every single day. Welcome to you, Annie. Oh, hi, Chanel. Happy self-care summer. Happy self-care summer. It's funny because I made it up literally in the doctor's office and it's become a thing. Um, all right, so this sounds even silly to ask, <laughs> but what does it mean, uh, you know, when we talk about having fun and play? It isn't silly to ask because kids get it, but adults have forgotten, right? Like we just don't mm. prioritize play and fun anymore, but we feel it in our bodies. I mean, it is part of self-care. What's true about you and I both, Chanel, is we put everything in our lives and make time for what makes us healthy, and fun is part of that. I believe it. So if you're not feeling your best, I mean, everybody knows how to have fun if you're in a good mood and you're going to a party. Talk about some things that we can do, um, you know, to, to find it. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's the challenge of holding both the joy and suffering of life and telling yourself the truth. If things are hard, that is okay. But can you also find a little fun in your day? You can do it alone. There's a lot of ways that you can have fun with what matters most to you, with your partner, with your friends, with kids in your life, with your community. I mean, there is fun really everywhere. As long as you don't think fun has to be big and expensive. If you can remember fun can be small and quiet, Sometimes, not all the time, I'm not very often quiet, mm. but it can be short and it can be inexpensive. It's it is really available to you to help you feel healthy. I know, you know, I was just reading that, you know, it's important to be able to have fun by yourself. Can you give me some ideas about that? It can end up feeling a little selfish to some people, but the reality is it makes you who you want to be. And if we work so hard, I love this quote. Someone says, if we work so hard with our minds, we need to rest and have fun with our hands. And if we work every day mm. with our hands, we need to be resting with our minds. So because I write books and I'm like you, I talk all day long. One of my favorite hobbies, I brought it to show you, Cheryl. 
I cross stitch. I did the entire mm. skyline of Nashville. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> but I it love just gives that. My thing to do. And thank you. I'm very proud. <laughs> it gives your hand something to do. So it can be gardening or cooking or playing a sport or working outside, just, just running around, it, doing things like cross stitch or knitting, things that are small and in your home, you can do by yourself. It'll just bring you joy and get you off your phone. Scrolling is not a hobby, Chanel. We know that, right? Scrolling's Ooh, not a look hobby. That's a t-shirt. Scrolling is not a hobby. Right? Let's talk about having fun with a partner when we get that special one-on-one -on -one time together. What do you recommend? Yeah, I have often found for myself and for my friends that when you are with your partner, if you will just ask them, what sounds fun to you? I know that sounds really simple, Chanel, but if you say what sounds fun to you and then you ask them why three times, hmm. by the time you get that third why, they're actually telling you something about self-care and about their heart and about their childhood. And so you can kind of say, man, I didn't know that was important to you when you were little, or I didn't know that mattered so much to you. You said you wanted to play basketball, but what I'm hearing you say is that was a hobby you and your dad did together and you really miss your dad. In every city we live in, there's things we haven't explored, right? So keep it local, keep it interesting. Look online and look and see what restaurants everybody else is eating at that you haven't tried yet. And kind of being an adventurer in your own life is so fun. It's like marriage therapy through fun. Um, let's talk about friendships. I, even for me, especially, you know, a lot of us have younger ones. And so we're so busy by the time we do work and try to connect with our spouses and try to connect with our children. Our friends sometimes fall by the wayside. So what's your advice for how to stay in touch and build in fun uh, with your friends? This is going to sound way too easy, but the reality is you just put it on your calendar. And then the fun thing is what ends up happening when you put it on your calendar and you get in a group text, all of a sudden you're going, what are we going to do? Well, what sounds fun to you? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this actual deep conversation happens among friends and you go, I, I didn't know that mattered to you. Yes, we will do that. And by the time that thing on the calendar gets here, you know your people better and you're getting to have fun together. And I think you're right. I've even noticed with my friendships just through planning something far off. It's just the day to day thread sometimes where you can stay connected, you know? Yes. And it just makes you feel, um, more like you. It does for me at least. Like, And that's what we're doing. If we're looking at fun as part of self-care, we're going, how can I be more like me and a healthier version of me after this summer? And one of the ways is more connection and fun breeds connection. I love it. All right, so finally, let's talk about ideas for your kids and how they can have fun. Sometimes it can feel like another job, but you've got three things here. You've got a soccer ball, a Frisbee, and I'm not sure what this is. It's a towel? It's a blanket. A blanket? Yeah. Oh, it's a picnic. It looks like a picnic blanket. Yes, that's exactly right. I'm telling you, those are the three things I keep in my car all the time. I brought it here with me. I keep those in my trunk all the time because anytime I'm with kids, I'm not married yet, don't have kids yet, but they are all over my life. And if I'm with kids and suddenly <laughs> they can throw a Frisbee, I want to be ready. And so when it comes to kids, you know if you what? will, that's if you so will let good. Them, so fun. If you will let them lead. If you will, if you ask them what sounds fun to you and they say, I would love to go jump in a creek and you go, all right, we'll figure it out. It may be messy, but if you will let them lead, kids are going to take you to fun almost every time. I love it. Sometimes adults, we just need to let go a little bit. Good advice. Thank you, Annie. Annie's book, Chase the Fun, 100 Days to Discover Fun Right Where You Are, uh, released August the 2nd. Thank you, Annie. It was nice to talk to you today. Uh, you too. Go out all and have right. some fun while you mm -hmm. have self-care. Cheers to that. The most recent American Dietary Guidelines suggest that healthy eating includes consuming a variety of fruits and vegetables, as we all know. So with summer in full swing, a lot of popular produce is in peak season across the country. So if you're hoping to take advantage of this and increase your fruit and vegetable intake, we have registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto. She is here with some tips and some yummy recipes to make it easier, something you can try today when you get home or if you are at home. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. So I think most people know we should be eating fruits and vegetables vegetables, yada, yada, yada. But yep. can you give us really quickly just a real, I guess, a better understanding of the benefits, what we underestimate? Yeah, you know, fruits and vegetables have antioxidants, they have vitamins, they have minerals, they help with your gut health. You know, there's a lot of fiber in fruits and vegetables, so that helps to keep you full. So if you're looking for a lot of bang for your buck when you're eating a meal, you always want to pair it with a fruit or a vegetable. Right. I think people think it's all or nothing. Like, I have to eat only plants in order for me to be healthy. And that's not entirely true. It's just like, let's look for ways to incorporate it 
it at most meals. So it's really easy to get them in at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you don't have to roast, you know, broccoli and, you know, turn your oven on. You right. can just, like, simply slice up carrots like I do with my kids. And so they're not going to eat roasted, you know, slaw or anything like that, but they'll grab the carrots and put it on the side of their protein, and that, that's the vegetable that they're eating for the day. All right, so with that said, let's dig in. The beautiful part to me about this season, you get to try fruits and vegetables or things that are in season that maybe you normally wouldn't try. Yep. Um, so what should we start with? This looks yummy. Yes, it's grilled romaine. Grilled romaine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I work with uh, some really great people who've taught me this trick, which is take the romaine, put it on the grill. The whole thing? The whole thing, okay. a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, lemon juice, and it's just a fun way okay. to eat lettuce like the lettuce doesn't have to be dry you don't have to put rice wine vinegar on it and that's it you're not relegated to misery just because you're eating a green there's nothing else in there that's really good no there's nothing else in there parmesan cheese shaved parmesan oh. will take things to another so place wait, take the wait what's on there again that's so really when you're grilling the romaine it's just mm. olive oil Finish it off with some lemon juice. Mm. Then when you're making your meal, right? Here's some rice. I got some chickpeas for some for some extra protein. Okay. And then some shaved Parmesan on top. Mm. It just like gives a different flavor profile and it makes you want to eat it. Mm. It's not dull and, and dry. You know, it's a healthier choice, but it's legitimately yummy. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're depriving yourself. Exactly. That's good. All right, so next. What's this next one? You want to do this one? The frittata. Yeah, okay. so the frittata is the go-to on a Friday because the kids are always, like, at the pool, at camp. They're eating pizza and all these things, so it's not like they're not enjoying their summer. Sure. Sure. Um, but, you know, you, you go out and you buy these vegetables because they're in season, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I'm going to try something new, and then the week goes by and you didn't use it. True. So it's really easy to just crack 12 eggs, put that in a bowl, whisk it up, mm -hmm. get whatever the spinach or the broccoli that might be turning and isn't going to be good the next day, and just bake it in the oven really quick, and then I'll chop up any kind of, you know, mm. onion and um, broccoli and maybe some zoodles and bell peppers and a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and we have dinner that night, and we probably have breakfast the next morning. You can morning. save it. Yeah. It goes well in the fridge. Yeah. Wasted so many vegetables. Yeah. They just forget that they're there. Yeah, you yeah. and everybody else, and like, or they just don't know what to do with them, That's right? True. So a lot of times I tell people, don't be afraid to buy frozen vegetables or frozen fruit. It really minimizes waste. They're allowed to ripen to the peak, and then it's minimal processing, flash frozen. So then you just take what you need when you need it. You can, you know, store it for the next time, yeah. and it doesn't go bad right away. This is good. All right, so this one, we should put the recipe on the website. What is this? So this is just a bunch of vegetables that, you know, are always turning in my refrigerator. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to buy these six yep. red bell peppers, and then I'm going to make my husband go down mm. and grill them, and then that never happened. Mm, <laughs> what's right? in there? Yeah, so it is um, red onions, because red onions takes everything to another place that I love so much. Different types of peppers, right? Some zucchini, you know, you shave them really thin, okay. some balsamic vinegar, a little olive oil, done. It doesn't, is there like goat cheese or something? In the it? goat cheese is on the... Um, oh, that's why. I was like, mm, <laughs> what is this? Because it all, all works together. together. But it all works together. But that's the thing. You don't have to make it complicated. You have these things already in your house. So just chop and serve. Vanessa, that's really good. Good. Okay, last but not least, a lot of us like to throw kebabs on the grill. Yeah, so, so, what, so what I will do is, because I love pineapple, I'm still thinking about the pineapple that I had in Maui in 2006 on my honeymoon. <laughs> um, and so I will get a pineapple, mm -hmm. chop it up, I'll make the, the kebabs, Grilling pineapple brings out like a different kind of sweetness and also the same when you're doing red onion or eggplant or tomatoes It brings the sweetness to it. That's really fun And so you'll have that and maybe you're gonna have it as an appetizer and I'll put out nuts my favorite Pistachios with, that are salt and vinegar pistachios <laughs> try them. They're delicious. It gives a different flavor profile Sometimes I will you know grill up some chicken and then maybe tomorrow I'm gonna use these kebabs with my chicken and make a different kind of chicken salad mm -hmm. And then I don't need to have, you know, extra lettuce. So there's just always some quick ways for you to have really fun and different foods that are plant forward yeah. that don't take a ton of time for you to make. Honestly, this is a good segment just because we know we're supposed to eat fruits yes. and vegetables, but we get in a rut yeah. when it comes to figuring out what to do with yeah. them. And like you said, we don't want to be in the kitchen all day. Yeah. So look at this table, everybody. These are all things that we can do. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thanks for having me. These are really yummy. By the way, there are so many easy recipes that make fruits and vegetables the star of any meal. So I'm glad we did this. Just go to today.com slash food for breakfast, lunch, dinner. We have inspiration there. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you so much. All right, because temperatures heat up. We're showing off our arms and tank tops and sleeveless dresses. Fitness expert Stephanie Mansour is going to demonstrate easy exercises that will tone our upper body and inspire some confidence throughout the rest of the summer.
Hey everyone, I'm your trainer, Stephanie Mansoor, and right now we're all enjoying the best parts of summer, plus all of the outdoor activities like swimming, biking, and kayaking. So today I'm gonna take you through a few easy exercises that you can do to strengthen and tone the upper body and the arms so that you feel good and strong in your summer tank tops and your sleeveless dresses. You can use dumbbells or resistance bands for these moves. I'm gonna show you how to use them both. Let's start with bicep curls. Now we're gonna pick up the dumbbells here and I have three pound weights, but you can start as low as one pound or you can go up as high as seven or eight pounds. So starting with your feet as wide as your shoulders, pull your abs in, softly bend your knees. We're gonna externally rotate the arms and move into a bicep curl with external rotation. We keep the elbows hugged in towards the side of your body so that we maintain proper form without getting out of alignment. We do 10 of those with the dumbbells. As an alternative, we can do 10 with the resistance bands. So standing on the resistance band with your feet as wide as your shoulders, externally rotating the shoulders here and the arms, holding those handles, exhale, curl up towards the shoulders and lower. Now what's great about these resistance bands is you'll feel resistance on the way up and on the way down of every single movement. Now next I'm going to show you an overhead press and this is a great move to work those shoulders and help make them look nice and sleek. We're going to start with the weights as high as your ears here in a goal post position. Pull your abs in, exhale, press the weights up over the head and come back to center. So you want to make sure that you can look forward and see these weights in your peripheral vision. Now you might be asking, okay, that's great, but how can I do that exercise with resistance bands? Let me show you how. What we're gonna do is instead of stepping on the resistance band with both feet, we're gonna step with one foot forward, one foot back in a staggered position. Pull the abs in, bend the front knee slightly, hold on to the resistance band handles at your ears. This is ear level in that goal post position. Exhale to press up and inhale lower. For the tricep kickback, we're gonna lean forward, abs in tight, and hug the elbows up towards the sides. As you have the elbows bent, you're gonna exhale and extend the arms back and then come to center. Make sure the upper arms are not moving. The upper arms are nice and stationary here as you're reaching the dumbbells back as if you're trying to punch the wall behind you with the tip of the dumbbell. Now I'm gonna show you from the other side too, leaning forward, hugging those elbows in, this is our starting position. We exhale, press back, inhale to center. Now we're gonna do the same motion with the resistance band, but instead of making you go get a new set of resistance bands, use the one with your handles, but have the handles hanging here with your hand underneath the resistance band, holding onto it at your chest. Use the other hand here with tension on the band, and then exhale to straighten the arm down, inhale to bend it. Exhale, straighten it down, Inhale to bend. The next exercise, a lateral raise. So again, we're going back to those shoulders. So pick up those dumbbells for the dumbbell version of the lateral raise. Stand with the feet as wide as the hips, abs in, knees softly bent. We're gonna exhale to bring the weights up as high as the shoulders, great. And then inhale lower down. We can also do this with the resistance band. So what we're gonna do is grab the resistance band, step on it with both feet, and then we're gonna open the arms out to the sides as high as the shoulders and lower down. And notice we've got that tension again on the upward motion and on the downward motion. All right, the last exercise in this upper body workout is V for victory. So we all wanna feel victorious this summer and every day. So we're gonna start with the feet as wide as the hips, hold those dumbbells down at your hips. From here, we're gonna lift the weights up into a V as high as the shoulders and lower down, good. So I've got my palms facing each other on this because it's more comfortable to hold on to the dumbbells this way. And I don't want you to have to use your forearms or any other muscles to do this, aside from the upper arms and the shoulders. Now we're gonna lift up the resistance band to do this and watch as I hold on to this resistance band with a different grip. So standing on the resistance band with your feet as wide as your hips, hold the bands down at your hips and then with the palms face down, we're gonna lift up to that V and lower down. Good, lift up to the V, relax the traps, lower down. So we do 10 reps of each of these. We repeat the entire series 
for three times total. And I promise you, if you do this routine every other day for a couple of weeks, you are gonna notice a major transformation in your arms and you're gonna feel so strong. Thank you, Stephanie. You can do each of these exercises for 10 reps and do three rounds for a complete upper body workout. And it's never too late to get moving. In fact, join the Start Today community on Facebook to find others just like you who are getting stronger each day. The best part of summer is the adventures. And oftentimes, there is one right in your own backyard. We are joining today contributor Donna Farazan as she goes on a relaxing kayaking journey down the Hudson River. I kind of immediately feel like I'm on vacation. Yeah, exactly. You feel like you're in the Caribbean and you're only 20 minutes outside of New York City. There's more to do in Sleepy Hollow than hunt for the headless horseman. Wow, oh, this is gorgeous. Look at this. Can I dip my toe in? Absolutely, absolutely. Feel this the water temperature. This is the first beach of the season, Mike. Whew. A little chilly, but refreshing. Why should kayaking be on everyone's list this summer? It's the memories. You know, the memories that you get to experience with family, friends. It's a team building activity. My guide, Mike Napoleon, has led kayak tours with Hudson River Recreation for the past four seasons. I always kind of introduce people to paddling sports as a lazy man sport. You want to do minimal effort to get as far as you want to go and then get to your destination and enjoy it. The water conditions are, are everything. You always kind of want to know your scenarios and know what you're getting into before you go. After I got my life jacket on securely, Mike showed me a few paddling basics before we hit the water. So if I take the center of my paddle here, I throw it right over my head and I use that as my middle point. And I make two boxes here, one right here and then another one with this arm. I now know that my elbows are right at 90 degrees. So now I can take my paddle and I know the optimum placement for my hands. Okay. Big thing is it's a sweep stroke. And the reason I say that is because it's really easy to remember that you're almost trying to sweep the floor. And that's going to actually help me nice out and wide and actually help me to actually turn the boat. I feel ready for a total body workout. I hopped in the cockpit. All right, you all set? I already love it. I could just sit here. We have to paddle now? <laughs> well, that's part of the fun, but we don't have to go too far. It's all about enjoying the paddle. I feel like I'm the star of my own movie right now. There you go. Look at your cruising now. I'm going to have to catch up. Come catch up, Mike. <laughs> Full speed ahead. And anyone can give this sport a try. Kayaking's for everyone. I mean, all ability levels, all age groups, there's adaptive kayaking where there's special equipment that's involved. So it really has made the sport very inclusive and very adaptive too. Now, as we come around the bend here, we have a fantastic view of the Tappan Zee Lighthouse, a great view of the Tappan Zee Bridge. There's something about being on the water, being able to just reach out and touch it. It's cleansing. Oh, it feels really good. I will say the other great thing about this sport is that I really am only thinking about what I'm doing right exactly. now. Exactly, you're in the, the moment. Present. The water is crystal. The water is pristine, beautiful, the perfect clear. temperature too. Couldn't ask for a better day. What's your favorite thing to do at the end of each kayaking session? I mean, obviously are, are some nice tacos and a cerveza. Tacos and a beer? Absolutely, that's the way to go. I had a great time and I think we have one more thing that we need to do. Do you? Yeah. I have a little something for you. Thank you for being such a gracious host. Now oh, it's time for my favorite part. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Great paddling with you. Great paddling with you to kayaking, to, to a new views. den that I need, and uh, to the views. Absolutely. Cheers. Thanks to Hudson River Recreation for guiding Donna's trip in Sleepy Hollow. Well, thank you for joining me to embrace the joy that I call self-care summer. I hope you feel inspired to have some fun, eat a little healthier, and move in ways that makes your body feel energized. And to use this summer to prioritize you. I'm Chanel Jones, and we'll see you next time on Wellness Today. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.